Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Parlay Revival, as we get to rub shoulders with the best surfers in the world and one of the scariest waves on the planet. This place has an energy about it which is too hard to describe with words, much like our whale encounter in this episode, which leaves us absolutely mind blown. Oh my god! Hope you enjoy it. So I'm Colin, and this is the crew of Parlay Revival. From hurricane damaged to broken bulkheads, getting struck by lightning not once but twice to being the strongest and fastest Lagoon 450 on the planet. We are now sailing 5,000 miles from Mexico to New Zealand, my home, before continuing our circumnavigation. So subscribe to follow our journey around this beautiful planet. 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did. So what are you waiting for? What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of Pale Revival. So this week we're going to do something we haven't done in a long time. We're going to focus solely on surfing. We're going to hang out down near Chopu. We've got the WSL happening down there. We've got Kelly Slate. We've got the best surfers in the entire planet all coming to meet here next week. We're going to get amongst it. It's going to be an absolute spectacle to see Chopu working at its finest. For the next couple of weeks, I've invited my good friend Christian to come surfing with us. He has won the national surfing comps a couple of times in Costa Rica. He's also bringing his son Nico, who's 14 years old, and he just won the Costa Rican champs as well. So following in his dad's footsteps, these guys are better surfers than I'll ever be in my entire life. So hopefully we can watch them getting some mad barrels. Let's go. We're picking Christian up now. He's just flown all the way from Costa Rica. You nice made it! You. <laughs> How Good are to you? see you, man. Yeah, man. Paradise, Hello. huh? Look out here. Wow, yeah, this place is insane. The return. How are you? Yes. Wow. How are you? So we wasted no time heading south towards Tiahupo. And even just as we left the anchorage, the boys got to see Tapuna which is a surf spot literally right next to the marina. This is insane, insane. So grateful to be here. Just the water, the waves. Look at this thing. But we couldn't stick around for long because the World Surf League was starting soon, which is at one of the heaviest waves in the world. So we knew we were in for a treat. It was about a 40 nautical mile sail. So we decided to make one stop along the way. So this is a spot called Vairao. It's also known as Big Pass and it's another solid surf spot. But I can't see any surfers, so I'm just hoping that I got the right spot. Oh my god! Look at that corner! Look, 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 look. Yeah, I think my heart is gonna pop up out of my body. <laughs> out of my mouth. You're not going out? Not today. You're gonna see the big ones come. Oh, true? Really big. It's perfect wave, no one out. It's a weird... It's a, it's a, it's a really a good, weird feeling about it. I haven't seen anything that's too scary here, but these guys are trying to talk us out of it but with with good intentions. They're more worried it's no joke. No they just said someone here. smashed a local guy, which is, you know, they're usually pretty good. Cracked the skull open, and he's been dragged across and cut his back. So it's no joke. We've only been here 15 minutes, and we haven't seen the set wave come through. When it does, it just wreaks havoc. The smart thing to do would be wait till tomorrow morning. Yeah. Christian's one of the best surfers in Costa Rica, and even he's like, Ooh. and there's not a single person out. So after much deliberation, we decided that we would paddle out while the other dinghy was still around. We're doing it! This turned out to be a bad idea because the current ripping out of the pass was actually much stronger than we could paddle and we literally ended up getting swept out to sea. The only way to catch a wave would be to get dropped in the middle of the pass and hope the current puts you in the perfect takeoff spot for a wave before you ended up way out the back. But we decided to let this be a lesson about just how gnarly these waves are and catch a ride back to Parlay. That was our first surf. Mm, Tahiti one off <laughs> syrup. It was pretty crazy. So we jumped in <laughs> and the current just swept us out so we're just battling this current there's a reason there was no one out there and the one guy that went out the the other sailor guy he he just got swept out and then the dinghy brought him back in and uh yeah 
We just well, ended actually, up getting a ride back with him. Big thanks to them. So we're in a place called Viral right now. And we're gonna try go inside the reef all the way down to Chopu. It looks like it's possible on the charts. There's a narrow channel. I don't know if that channel's designed for dinghies or these speedboats or sailboats. But we'll find out. We don't know what to expect. And I heard there's a pretty bad current coming through here as well. Wow, I'm, I'm actually stoked to be, to be here. This, the surroundings, the view is, is insane. And now we want to see the best surfers in the world doing their thing before they come. John John Medina. It's my first time seeing a, a, a contest with my own eyes. So, you know, like, I don't know what to expect. I'm super excited just to be on the surrounders of that energy, right? Like, it's just insane. I'm super happy. Look at this. We're in this tiny little channel. It gets really narrow and shallow there. It looks insane. Oh! How crazy is this, dude? Wow, the water is something I've never seen in my life. All right, guys, we finally made it to Chopu. You can see the tower right there. There are so many boats on the wave. You talk about bucket list things to do. We're anchored right next to Chopu. You can't anchor any closer. Just mind blowing. And then all in these houses are the best surfers on the planet. So we're going to jump in the dinghy and go check it out. There's probably 50 boats there. We can see it from here. Unreal. John, John, just get a stand-up barrel. <laughs> oh, my hands are shaking. He's just so confident. Grab it real. Let the real go. Perfect exit. It just blow my mind. You know. How cool is this? Christian. Really cool. Tiahupo is arguably one of the most dangerous waves in the world. The swell comes from water, which is thousands of feet deep to all of a sudden landing on a razor sharp coral reef where the wave actually sucks the water off the reef making it look like the wave is breaking below sea level. Te Aupo translates to English as the place of skulls and for good reason. The competition wasn't starting until tomorrow so we could have surfed with the pros this day if we had wanted to but I certainly knew my limits as I had paddled out here nine years ago when dad got shipwrecked on an atoll near here and I was too scared to catch a single wave. I can't believe the energy, it's just unreal. Medina, Joao, John John. He said hi to us. He said hi to us. Here at Tehupo, as we look at Yago, Dora, and Kelly, just want to put on a really good performance and get a really good wave. For me, that's the best barrel I've seen so far of the event. The goat attempting backside half off the top, throwing a vertical. This is crazy. Carnage. So many boats right here. Can't even see. So Kelly Slade is on the next heat. So we're sitting here, warming up somewhere. So close yet so far. <laughs> this one is a very organized mess. We can't see much, but just the vibe, the energy. I can't imagine to be on a hit with so many eyes looking at you. Wow, this is in. I don't know what is more intense, to be here or to be out there. <laughs> you are like, oh, the boat is there, the wave is there. Like, where's the god? This is so cool. Oh, the atmosphere. Everyone's here to see Kelly Slater, the biggest name. Surfing history. As a surfer, it was absolutely unreal to be seeing all of the pros doing their thing right in front of our eyes. 
We were so close that we were actually on TV behind Kelly Slater in one of his interviews. We're in there now, the whole dinghy. <laughs> yeah. These guys and girls are the world's very best. People who have dedicated their entire lives to surfing and have been named the very top surfers on this planet. The reason this was such an amazing place to spectate from is because right next to the surf break is a deep channel where the waves pretty much never break. Unless, of course, a freak wave catches everyone off guard, like it nearly did to us here. What? A wave literally just broke right there. Or to these guys in previous years. So the competition went on for a few more days before a gruelling final went down between Gabriel Medina and Jack Robinson. Robinson did the impossible task to win. In my mind, to, to beat Medina in this condition was an impossible task, but you never give up. That's the lesson of today. Never give up. Medina just lost, but not only does he is he out of the world title contention, he's not going to the finals at lowers, but he also isn't going to the Olympics now. So he just come out of the water and ran past. You can tell he's just demoralized. That was a huge loss for him. It's a, such a crazy sport, because one wave can change your life. One wave can just change everything. And that, whether that wave stands up right in front of you and you're in the right place at the right time to get it is the difference between a world title and being 10th in the world. And so the winner of this WSL event was Jack Robinson from Australia, who was kind enough to sign Nico's hat for him after his win. He had beaten Gabriel Medina by 0.66 points to hold up the infamous trophy here at Teo Po, which Kelly Slater has held up an incredible five times. The next day, the swell had dropped off significantly, so we took the opportunity to surf with a bunch of pros who had stuck around for a free surf. Hopefully my leash holds. I've found that footage of waves, whether it be surfing or even just sailing in big seas, always looks half the size on camera than it does in real life. So you'll have to just take my word for it that even though this doesn't look too big, the power of this wave is absolutely bone shattering and breaks into water only a few feet deep over a sharp, live coral reef. We did it. Bucket list. Surf section, heaviest wave I've ever surfed, hands down. Christian was ripping out there. Stoked. We just served tropes with the pros. So stoked. You know, it's just, I don't know how many way I got, like 20 or something like that. Woo! Even as one of Costa Rica's best surfers, he was humbled by the sheer power of this wave. Surfing will be in the Olympics this year, which is actually going to be held right here at Chopes. I'm not sure I'll ever get to see this wave breaking like this in real life again. So we all just felt absolutely blessed to have witnessed this event right off the back of Parlay. So Christian and Nico were leaving soon, so I wanted to show them my favourite surf spot on Morea Island. But on our way, something absolutely incredible happened. I can't believe it just jumped out, like there was no warning, nothing, it just went shoom, bang. A couple of whales popped up, literally metres from the boat. So we all scrambled to get our free diving gear on and jump in with them. And what happened next will stay with me for the rest of my life.
the mother and calf came back towards us and it looked as though the mother was teaching her calf how to breathe and dive, gently pushing her to the surface as they swam around us. The sheer size of these animals is absolutely mind-blowing. It was one of the most breathtaking things I have ever seen. Oh my god! That was unbelievable! Where? I can't see them! One of the most pure moments I ever witnessed in my life. Oh my god! Did you stop? <laughs> oh my god! Are we alive? <laughs> if this one is Earth, I can't imagine how it is the next dimension. This is insane. This water and then surfing is like, what else? You know, it's just... <sighs> My brain is full of emotions. Woo! Thank you. This is Harpiti Anchorage on Morea Island and is one of my favorite places in all of French Polynesia. It is right next to the surf spot which is much more forgiving than where we had just been. So it was time for Nico to shine and show just why he's the Costa Rican under 14 champion. Oh, by the way, he won this when he was only 12 years old. Woo, we are surfing here in a beautiful Hapiti. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode, guys, and can imagine how amazing it was to witness the WSL in real life. For me, this is the ultimate reason I bought Parlay in the first place, to be able to sail to world-class waves and surf off the back of the boat. On Parlay, we've all said it's been the best year of our life so far, so here's to a killer 2024. Happy New Year, everyone.